It Film Sensei here. Last week we did this effect in the pro version. This week in the free version of Express. Strap yourself in, this rocket is taking off. So if you're in the hit film for Express version and you click on this starter pack, buy it, then it will take you to the hit film store and what you will see in there, it's $10, although it seems to be on sale at the moment, but you'll find the 3D extrusion. So for $10, you can do exactly what I did in last week's uh, video uh, with hit film Pro. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine, but I think you'd be crazy not to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by making a new project and I'm going to say start editing, click OK, and we're going to make a composite shot and we'll just leave it at the normal and click OK. I'm going to start doing everything that I did last week. So just kind of follow along with me. We're going to start by building our virtual set. So I'm going to start by creating a new layer, a camera layer. You can also say control alt C and then I'm going to create another new layer and it's going to be a point layer. Control alt P and then I'm going to make that into a 3D plane. So hopefully that was easy enough to follow. I'm going to rename this camera control and then I'm going to, using this drop down box, I'm going to parent the camera to the camera control point. So now if I change the viewer perspective here and I back out of here, what you will see is you'll see our virtual 3D space and you will also see that the point is right here, the camera's right here. And if I raise or lower the point, then the camera raises or lowers. I go side to side with it. It goes side to side. I go forward or back. It goes forward or back. Okay. If I were to twirl open the properties of the camera point under transform and look at the rotation Y category here or number, if I start tweaking that, then you can see that that will cause this thing to rotate around the virtual stage that I have set. So that's how we're going to get that camera movement. Okay. So now we're going to add our text. So I'm going to say, new layer, text layer, and I want to make this as wide as my um, screen is going to be. Let's go ahead and go back to the camera, and there it is. And then I'm going to click on this little A icon, clicking inside the box, and I'm going to actually type my text out. I'm going to highlight them all by using Control A, and then I'm going to center it, and I want to make it really big, okay? Now, from here, I want to actually make it a 3D plane, and then I want to raise it so that it is exactly at the same level as the floor here, okay? And there we go. Now, I want to bring in my floor um, stuff, and so I'm going to import those things. Okay, so I have imported the assets that I will now be using. And we're going to start with the diamond floor. This is something that I picked up online. I'm going to draw, drag and drop this into the composite shot, and I'm going to make it a 3D plane. From here, I'm going to, under the transform properties, I'm going to rotate the X axis rotation to 90 degrees so that it's sitting right underneath the letters there. And now with the camera control point. I'm just going to rearrange some of these things. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lift the camera up high enough so that you can actually see that. I'm going to turn off the grid so that you can see it. And then I'm just going to take a little trip around to show that, yes, the letters are there. They're kind of two dimensional and they're going to kind of stay that way. But you can see that we can go all the way around in three dimensional space. Okay. All right, so now from here, we're going to go ahead and create the stone texture. So I'm going to bring in the stone texture, and I'm going to put that just above the text. I'm also going to make this three-dimensional. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a set matte effect to it. So I search for set matte effect. It's under the matte enhancement folder, and I'm going to drag that onto the stone texture. And I'm going to source that to the text. So basically I'm telling HitFilm, I only want you to show this 
texture where it says or where the mat is, which is the letters in that text. Okay. Now I do want to, this is uh, purely for this particular uh, asset, but I'm going to drop the scale of this down to 80%. It may or may not be for you. Uh, I'm doing that because it looks better with this particular stone texture. Uh, and so your, your asset may be different. So, you know, you just kind of play with that uh, as you go along. Okay. Now, what I would normally do at this point is add my parallax effect. However, because it really slows my computer down, I'm going to wait to do that until after I light my scene, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new light to this scene, and you can see it's directly above the letter. So I'm going to rename this as the front light, and yes, I'm going to bring it to the front. So transform, and I'm going to bring it forward about 1,500 pixels on the Z axis so that it's really lighting that up. Also, I want to knock that down to about 50. Okay, yeah, because I don't want it to be two. And I'm actually going to um, change that light into a different light under this controls panel here. I'm going to open up the light properties. And instead of being a point light, I want it to be a spotlight. Now it's kind of pointing off in a weird direction. So what I want to do is under the layer properties, I want to say align the spotlight towards a layer. And the layer that we're going to align it to is the uh, camera control point because we know it's right in the middle. So now we have this little spotlight here right on that. And if I open up the light, I can actually open up the cone angle until it shows everything. And it's about 65 degrees for this particular example. Okay. So that's my front light. Now what I want to do is, is I want to make a backlight and I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to duplicate the front light and then move it. So I'm going to right click and say duplicate. I can also use the control D uh, hotkey. And then I'm going to rename it backlight. And I'm going to just simply move the backlight from 1500 pixels to negative 1500 pixels on the Z axis. So now it's in the back. Because it's a backlight, I want it to be slightly smaller or less intense, maybe 40. I also want to tick on the cast shadows because we're going to use that in a minute. Okay. So now you can see that it's sort of lit from front and back. Looks pretty nice here. And so now that I have the scene lit, I'm going to go ahead and add the shadows from the original text, which if I hide the stone text, you can still see the original text underneath there. And we, we won't actually want it to be on, but we are going to leave it on for a second while I go ahead and do the shadows. But I'm going to go under Material, and I'm going to say Cast Shadows even if it's invisible. Okay, so even if I do turn off the text layer, it still looks pretty cool. Okay, so now as you can see, everything looks pretty good, and it's exactly what we did before, except that there's not a 3D extrusion to it, so it's sort of one-dimensional. It's very flat there, right? Okay, but you can see how the shadows add and make it look three-dimensional and that kind of thing, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a cheat now to make that happen. I'm going to duplicate my text, okay? And I'm going to hide the original one. And this new text, I'm actually going to do a couple of things to um, one is, is that I'm going to rebring out and actually what I want to do is I want to move this old text out of here for just a second and I'm going to move it about 2000 pixels off to the left so that I don't, it, it's out of the way and I'm going to grab my text that I have created recently and under the text tab, I'm going to make it black and I want that text to look black here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, move it back using the transform properties. I'm going to move it back about eh, 40 pixels, maybe 30 pixels, just back far enough where it's sort of, uh, you know, out of the way. Now I can bring this back in, put that back to zero. So now it looks like there's uh extrusion behind it and that is sort of faking it but it is working and if i change the rotation here of the control point it does appear as if there's a 
side wall to it. But you can't go too far because then it starts to break down and you realize, oh, you're just cheating there. So I'm only going to go about 25 degrees off, but that does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Okay, and so now I have my sort of fake it. Now, also on top of that, if I add a drop shadow to the original stone texture, then it will sort of give it that look as well. Um, now, the drop shadow is already designed to sort of go in a certain direction, and so we're going to modify that a little bit. I want to change the the direction that it's going to negative 90 so that it's on this side of it, but it just kind of connects it, and that'll really happen when it uh, when it works. So I'm going to go about 20 pixels, which is a lot, okay? Uh, maybe maybe 15 pixels just to be on the safe side. Yeah, but it kind of covers the fact that it's not really a side wall. It's just the um, you know it's just a drop or black text behind it. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the parallax effect. Uh, these effects are going to really slow my computer down, but you'll get the idea. I'm gonna first drop it on the diamond floor, and bam! Oh, look at how big that is. And I'm going to change the height map to about 10, just so that it's not quite as, uh, you know, ridiculous. And then I'm going to drop the parallax effect on the stone texture itself. And I'm going to put it above the drop shadow. Uh-huh. And then, oh, and you know what I need to do is I can still see the uh, white text back there. We want to get rid of that. Uh-huh. And we'll just drop and remove it. And then under the parallax, using the height map, I'm going to use the floor just to make it, you know, and I could use any texture I want, right? Okay, now that I've done that, all I have to do is move the camera around. Unfortunately, when I do that, it takes a long time, okay? The last part of this tutorial will be to add the light flare that makes it look like it's there's an actual light back there. So I'm going to create a new layer. It's a plain layer. I want it to be black. And it's, I'm going to just call it flare. Okay. And then, of course, it's covering everything. I'm going to change the blend mode to add by right-clicking on it and coming up to blend mode. And now it's add. And I'm going to add my flares to that. Whoops. And it might help if I spell it correctly. Flares to that. And the light flare goes right there. And boom, there it is. And I'm actually going to duplicate it. So I have two of them. The second one, I'm going to move the hotspot position from negative 300, 300 to 0, 300 so that there's two of them. And then I'm going to add my environmental wrap. And remember, this was the 360 viewer in the pro version, but this one is the environmental map viewer. And we're going to drop it here. It's the same exact um, effect, just changed a little bit differently. So now as the camera moves, uh, it will actually create... Um, the illusion that those flare light flares and lens dirt and stuff are moving across there and that's basically it in a nutshell this is how i accomplished this effect in the free version of hit film for express so feel free to subscribe to the channel like this video if you want and hey thanks for watching If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.